All righty. Um, so my name is Luke Simmons. I am a media and comms officer with Council. Um, I've been doing this role for about 18 months now. Um, so pretty much any communications that goes out to the public, to ratepayers, residents, um, we sort of handle and we we create for you guys so you know what's going on. Things like when uh, COVID started happening, where, where you need to get your information from, direct you to all the all that sort of stuff, what, um, what council assets are still open, that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, some of the other stuff that I've worked on, um, down the bottom here is just like a, a press conference. So we also are responsible for getting media to council um, or getting media for council. So that was the Redcliffe Dolphins um, NRL bid. And we had, you know, different TV like Channel 9, Channel 7, Channel 10, Fox, all these different TV um, and also Courier Mail and people like that to, to come and yeah, essentially get press for uh, a good cause in our region, essentially. Um, uh, oh, sorry, I'll probably just skip ahead. Uh, previously, I was a journalist um, uh, for I think five years before that. So I started at the Sunshine Coast Daily newspaper and then I moved down to Quest News and the Courier Mail. Um, I may have dealt with some of you guys in some capacity when I was doing that because I do a lot of, did a lot of community news um, and a lot of sport and things like that. Um, Moving on to this next slide. So this is uh, <laughs> this is a bit self-indulgent. This video is a video. Alrighty, so that's <laughs> it's a bit embarrassing to watch. Um, but uh, the reason why I played that is um, there is actually a reason. Uh, so if you remember Michelle Jenicky, she was a hurdler, she was an Australian hurdler, and she well, at the time it was around 2015. She was quite famous for her pre-dance warm-up, which she just did then. And so I had a chance to interview her for an article, which was going in the paper. Um, and then online. So then we thought about how can we get the most out of it? Um, it's, a bit, it's more of a visual thing, like what she does and what's interesting about her. So we, we got the, the photographers to come down and then we did that, that silly little video. Um, it's sort of just a, a way of, so yeah, instead of getting X amount of people to read an article online, we got a whole lot more because of the engagement from the video. So it brought in an extra 40 odd, 50 odd thousand people to that article. So um, I guess how that relates to you guys is that, I mean, you're probably not going to have access to someone like Michelle Jenicky, but um, uh, I guess it's just an example of how you can sort of uh, pu push, push the boundaries of what you're doing when you're doing communications with your members, with the public, if you're trying to get new members or if you're trying to get media yourself, you can, yeah, think about, you know, you can do a media release or a, a social media post, but then video is also valuable as well. Or, yeah. So. Alrighty. So. So a goal without a plan is only a dream. So effective communications can help you reach your goals. Um, I want to do a quick exercise with you guys. Um, if you've got pen and paper, you can do it. If not, just something to think about. Um, yeah, so for when you go back to, you, to your community groups, you can sort of try and implement this. But um, so you, I want you all to write down one or two short term goals that you might have for your community club or whatever you guys do. Um, and Make, yeah, make it something that you want to achieve uh, within the next year or so. So if you just want to have a second to think about a goal that you might have um, and make sure it's something that uh, you need to communicate, like that involves communications as well. So um, an example might be that you're trying to attract 20 new members within the next year. Um, you might be trying to in introduce a new 
um, activity or something like that to your regular programming. Um, yeah, so once you've done that, then you can sort of, uh, once you've identified your goals, then you can start to come up with a plan of how you're going to action that. So, who is your audience? So the next thing you need to think about is obviously who your audience is. Um, you should be able to ask yourself who that who the demographic is that you're targeting. If you can't do that, then you yeah you need to at least try and come up with something. So um, I guess try to be specific as well. So you might be running a junior football club, something like that, um, and you want to increase your membership with a five to ten year old age bracket. Maybe you've got no maybe. You've you're five short of a team or something like that. So obviously you want to target kids, but you also want to be targeting their their parents more so than anything because the parents are the people who are going to read your communications or see your website, all that sort of stuff. Um, there's obviously a whole other, a whole lot more other demographics, like you might be specifically trying to target female membership if you're lacking females or something like that in your club. Um, so now for each of the goals that you wrote down before, um, I just want you to also write down next to it who your audience is, who you think your audience is um, that you're trying to target. So the next slide. Um, cut through the proverbial. So. Um, so in this day and age, we're sort of, we're time poor. We don't have a lot of time. Like I think about myself, I commute an hour every day to work one way. So that's each way two hours. Um, and then when I get home, <clears throat> I go to the gym or something like that. I make food, I, I clean up and it's almost ready to go to bed again and start again. So there's only a short window to get through to people, whether that's your members, whether whoever that is that you want to get through to. Um, so a good way to, uh, you should think about the channels that you're trying to uh, use to get through to them. So um, I know that my way of consuming news is that I often will listen to podcasts or the radio in the car because that's my only way of doing it for the day. So you probably want to start to think about um, how you want to then apply that to your uh, audience. So you, you say, so where do you get your news from? Think about that, how you consume your news, um, what time of the day, that sort of thing. Um, say you've got an older demographic that you're targeting, you might, uh, they might respond to things like emails or hard copy newsletter drops. Um, if you've got a younger crowd, it might be social media channels like Facebook, Instagram. Um, so yeah, this is where Choosing the right channel to communicate with your audience, your members is is vital because otherwise it will just fall on deaf ears. Um, um, got to mention, sorry, but I, I've also I've spent I'm involved with a football club on the Sunshine Coast, so I sort of have an understanding of the sort of things that you guys um, do every day and the, the challenges you face. Um, an example of how my football club with personalization personalizes their communications is so we have like a general Facebook page and a general Instagram page, which is sort of general news, but then we also have our own um, closed Facebook groups within Facebook um, for each specific team within the club. And that's where they can tailor more personalized um, communications to everyone. Um, that's just an example like like when COVID happened, they can tell them the game's been postponed or training's been called off, that sort of stuff. Um, they also do SMS, uh, have an SMS alert system, which I think is really, really good way of getting through to people quite quickly. Um, you can use that for one off big occasions like a general AGM or uh, uh, yeah, if you want to get details out about your AGM or a, a presentation night or something like that. Um, there are messaging apps that you can get so you can actually buy and, and use or you could if you're a small enough club you can just do it manually text everyone. Um, and lastly just to create quality content is seems like a pretty obvious one but a lot of people don't actually work on that. Um, you can't expect people to be engaged with what you're putting out there if you're not putting in the effort to actually come up with something interesting. 
Um, I guess, yeah, I'm not sure if Minyu touched on it, but like things with Facebook videos, people generally only watch Facebook videos for three seconds and they move on. If they're not interested, they'll move on. So, um, but yeah, don't be afraid to try videos, photos, anything um, like that. Show a bit of personality because that sort of creates a brand for you guys as a club um, and helps you reach new people. Um, you've got to stand out somehow. Um, if you if you try and it fails, don't don't be discouraged. Continue because yeah, it just it's just a, a process of finding what works for you. Um, so just expanding again on choosing your channels for um, uh, your media and communication channels. So might throw this up to people. Um, so. Most people would probably know what traditional media is. It's sort of um, advertising in radio, TV, uh, local newspapers, newsletters, letterbox drops, uh, posters, flyers, that sort of thing. But I guess obviously everything's moving to digital now as well. So if you want to target younger audiences as well, so you've obviously got your own website, um, which most of you probably will have a website. Um, that's more of a general thing where people can get information as like a landing page. Um, obviously email as well. Uh, it's a good way to get to communicate with your members on mass, but the the downfall of email is that people don't sit there on their emails waiting for emails to come through. So it might take you a long time to actually get through to them. Um, that's where social media is good. Um, as many sort of said, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, if your game TikTok, um, that's more of a younger person's game. So <laughs> um, then, yeah, you could even uh, use council's website to list an event if you've got any events that are coming up that you want to promote. Um, what management council can do that for you. And then there's obviously digital advertising um, through YouTube, other online streaming services, website ads on the Courier Mail. Um, and even digital advertising boards at shopping centres, if you've seen them, that's sort of an, a new way of um, uh, yeah, getting your message out there. So, and, and lastly, I guess the, the one that you want to be focusing on is your members. So word of mouth is obviously still a very strong way of getting your word out. Um, and that's one that you probably want to focus on the most. Um, so yeah, just, just some ideas, something to think about. Um, what channels you're currently using, uh, are they working for you, um, whether you need to think about expanding into other channels. Um, so lastly, don't uh, some, just a few golden rules about um, communications. Uh, so don't bury the information that you want to get out, the key information. So your who, what, why, when, where, that sort of stuff, get that up straight away at the top of your whatever it is, your post, uh, Facebook post or you're on your website, whatever it is, it needs to be yeah, front of centre. Uh, consistency, so if you're going to say do a blog uh, once a week, uh, make sure that you are doing that once a week because if you then like have a drop off and don't do it for three weeks or so, people will move on and assume you're not doing it anymore and they'll go somewhere else for that. Um, timing, so timing is important because say you've got an event tomorrow, um, you know there's going to be a massive hailstorm, it's outdoors, um, you need to obviously get that communicated to your members. Um, otherwise again they'll start looking elsewhere for that kind of information. And then purpose, make sure that you can answer what the purpose is for your post. Like if you, if you don't know what the purpose is then you should probably rethink what that post is. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and then the last one is just uh, just feedback. Open yourself up to feedback. Um, communications two way street. So if you're not listening to your members, you won't know what they actually want from you or need from you. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. If you've got any questions, um. I'm from the Brisbane North Chinese Association and Multicultural Consular Social Network. Um, we run the quite uh, a few the larger events, but we we need you to, to give us the, the contact details like the 
telephone and email address to contact the media, like the Korean mail, channel 7, channel 9, or something like that, so that we can contact them. Okay, um, so what uh, what kind of information are you trying to... We just need the email, email address so that we can invite them to... Yeah. Or that we can promote the swimming. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, we could. I could probably get your details afterwards and give you a few contacts. You can. You can. Most um, media organisations. You can find that that information online. Can be hard sometimes. Sometimes they don't want it to be easy to find. Um, so yeah, you want to look for um, chief of staff emails for like Korea Mail um, and things like that. Um, but yeah, I can get your details, maybe it'd be easier. Um, and, and just sort of a hint or a tip, if you are trying to get that media attention, uh, they, all these media organisations get hit with, bombarded with a lot of requests, a lot of things. Um, so I, would, I wouldn't do it too often. I would do it when you've, when you've got a big event coming up or something like that, something that's worth promoting and you think that they will be interested in. Because otherwise, that they they get so many requests, they'll just flick through it, and if it doesn't trigger them in any way, they'll just next next delete next sort of thing. Um, yeah, that'd be my only tip. No worries. All right, thank you guys.